What's up everybody, it's Jet Desert Fox, and this giant pile of guns right here is every gun that we use in the Player Unknown Battlegrounds Airsoft game. Today I'm going to go over each gun's performance, price point, what I liked and don't like about them. Let's start with some of the smaller guns we're using, particularly pistols. This handgun is the Matrix M9 Tokyo Marui clone. This gun costs around $99 on evike.com. It is green gas powered and shoots between 300 and 330 feet per second. Now one thing I noticed about this M9 unlike other M9s is the decocker does not work. On a real M9, the hammer would decock, but not so much the case in on this gun. I honestly don't remember if I actually used this gun or not during game, but the fact that this one still fires after all that abuse and laying in the dirt says a lot. So pretty good quality. Uh, I probably would recommend this one. If you are looking for a really good M9, I highly recommend the Elite Force Beretta M92A1. It's powered by CO2, does semi-automatic and full auto. Next up, we have the WeTech 1911. This gun retails for around $105 on evike.com, is powered by green gas, and shoots between 290 and 330 feet per second. Now, what I forgot to mention with the M9 is that we had duplicates of all of the guns that you see here on the table. So right now, I've got one set and D has the other set. So we had two of these 1911s. This one fired. The other one, however, once it got really dirty, it stopped firing which unfortunately is kind of the case for most Weetex if you don't clean them, and also most airsoft guns. However, I did notice that only about after one or two games, the other Weetex was so dirty that it wouldn't cycle anymore. Now that's partly why I prefer CO2 over green gas. There's a lot more power behind the CO2, and even when it's dirty or covered in dust or mud or anything, usually a CO2 handgun will cycle and work over the green gas one. If you are in the market for a 1911, I highly recommend the Elite Force 1911 TAC or any of the Elite Force 1911 series handguns that are CO2 powered. Up next, we've got the Umarex licensed IWI Uzi. This gun is classified as an AEG, but it's more of an LPEG, which stands for Low Powered Electronic Gun. This gun costs roughly $26 on evike.com, is battery powered, and shoots around 150 feet per second. So lots of people picked this gun up, but I don't think anyone really shot at anybody else with this thing because it was just kind of just comically horrible. However, it was really fun to run around with and just shooting it was, was hilarious. So the way this gun works is the magazine is actually not a magazine. This is where the battery goes. The BBs are actually fed in through the top to access the BB hopper. Basically, you just pull back on the charging handle and you can see the space where the BBs go. Now, since this is gravity fed, the BBs need to fall into the chamber in order for this thing to fire the next round. So as you're shooting this, you constantly have to be shaking it in order for the BBs to fall down into the chamber and, and fire. It's, it's really funny. So it's, it's almost like this pseudo recoil that you have to do to, to get the gun to feed and shoot. It's really, really hilarious. The saving grace for this gun is honestly, it's classified as an AEG, but it's since it's so low powered, I wouldn't say it's an AE. I mean, yeah, it is an AEG, but in the broad spectrum of AEGs, this thing will not, is not gonna be able to keep up with an actual AEG. If you're on a super duper low budget and you're gonna play like in your backyard or with your buddies uh, on some private property or something, and you know you don't wanna have to worry about getting your, your face shot up, this thing is perfect for that. And it's only 26 bucks. I actually wanna take this and use it at a real game just because that would be really hilarious. Okay, enough about, enough with this thing. Moving on up in firepower, we have the Umarex Elite Force h and UMP45 AEG. This AEG retails for around $244 on evike.com. It includes one 400 round high capacity magazine and shoots around 340 feet per second. It is an electronic blowback gun, so every time you fire, this bolt will action back. So I've actually owned one of these guns for several years now, and one of the downfalls to this gun, well, downfall, kind of a whatever, 
is the electronic blowback. Unfortunately, it will give out after a while, I'll say. However, it has no hindrance on the performance of the gun whatsoever. And if you're trying to be sneaky, not having the electronic blowback helps. The hop up in the Umarex Elite Force version is really good. Despite having a low FPS, with the hop up, its range is actually greater than what you would think it would be. I highly recommend this gun, especially if you're looking to break away from the traditional M4. Okay, let's change it up with a shotgun. This is the ST M870 full wood, full metal pump shotgun. This shoddy retails for around $106 on evike.com, is pump action, and unfortunately is single shot. It fires around 380 to 400 feet per second. So while this is a very nice looking shotgun, unfortunately it's only single shot. However, that doesn't mean it can't be fun. Once you kind of get this baby dialed in, it's almost like shooting a sniper rifle. One of the awesome things about having a shotgun like this though, is that you literally just have to bring the gun and BBs to the field in order to play. There's no worrying about charging your battery, bringing green gas, buying green gas, or having any other kind of power plant except the pump action of your arm. Unlike tri-shot shotguns, which are loaded via a fake shell, the ST M870 is magazine fed. Simply load the BBs into this magazine, insert the magazine back into the gun, pump that bad boy, and start plugging away. So if you fall under that category of backyard private property player, I highly recommend this shotgun. If you are gonna take this to an actual airsoft field, make sure you get a lot of practice with it at home. Back to AEGs, next up we have the FN Scar Light from VFC. This gun retails for around $269 on evike.com, is battery powered and shoots between 350 and 370 feet per second. There's really not much to say about this gun, it's just like any other kind of M4 AEG in a Scar flavor. It does include a telescoping and fold over stock, ambidextrous controls, front and rear flip up sights, monolithic rail, and three other rails to put accessories on. This was another good performing gun on the battleground. Now one cool thing about the VFC scars is that the battery pack is indeed in the butt stock, but when you fold over the stock, you don't see a bunch of wires. It's just connected by some metal contacts here. I mean, that's pretty much all that needs to be said about this gun. Uh, I do recommend. Okay, let's get into a gun that did not do so well, and that is the APS Full Wood Full Metal Battle Veteran AK-47 AEG. This gun retails for around $204 on evike.com. It is an AEG powered by a battery. It is also an electronic blowback gun and fires around 390 to 420 feet per second. The weight of this gun and the feel is great. It's very solid, feels good. The battery is in the upper receiver. Now I did use one of these in the first round and it shot pretty well. Uh, I think the hop up just didn't work or I couldn't adjust it. Unfortunately, I don't think I would recommend this gun to anybody. Sorry AK, but you just don't live up to the Kalashnikov expectation. And last but not least, we've got the ANK M16A3. This gun retails for around $180 on evike.com and it features the NS15 series internals from ANK. What all does that exactly entail? Well, it's mainly just internal upgrades such as a quick change spring system, eight millimeter ball bearings, and a reinforced gearbox. This gun shoots between 430 and 460 feet per second, which, wow, that's really high, and I'm glad I did not get shot at close distance with this thing. Wait, actually I did. Matt shot me with this gun, but he shot me in the vest. Oh, this is the gun that Matt used and he shot Leah in the ear. Yeah, so the 430 to 460 and her ear being destroyed like that makes a lot of sense now. So don't shoot anybody point blank with this thing. This thing is really powerful. Uh, that being said though, uh, it shot really well on the field, and this is a gun that I would recommend. With this longer barrel, you are gonna get a little bit more accuracy. Also, with the higher feet per second, you're gonna get a lot of range, too. Just make sure to use heavier weight BBs, so that way the wind doesn't take your .20 and sail it to the far right or left of the field. Again, the design is basically just another AR-15. The battery goes in the rear in this full stock. Nice thing about a full stock is that there's tons of battery space to put almost whatever size battery you want. 
I don't think I really need to go over the controls because it's an AR-15 and I think like 90% of everyone in Airsoft has at least some version of an AR-15. M4, M16, whatever base. That's gonna wrap up this very candid video on all the guns used in the Player Unknown's Battleground Airsoft game with Node, Corridor Digital, Unicorn Leah, and myself. Let me know which one of these guns is your favorite in the comments below. As always, this is Jet Desert Fox, and I'll see you on the field. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Jeez.